you've got 12 through 19 right, or 12 through 19 points, you have some growing up to do. But don't despair, everyone does to one extent or another. You are needy to the point of childishness on one hand, yet way too giving to others when you haven't dedicated care of yourself. You need to find a better balance. Seek out counsel from Proverbs and those that you respect as balanced emotionally. Okay, so that means you're always needing other people to help you or you're giving away so much that you're not even taking care of yourself. You're constantly wanting the approval of other people. Okay. Okay, 20 through 27. You may appear to be laid back and above it all, but underneath you are desperately worried about yourself and what people think about you. Advice, try to let go and be more honest about how you really feel to you, yourself and those that you interact with. You will feel better and have stronger relationships with people without feeling so great all the time. It's a little bit better, but still doesn't work. And then lastly, 28 to 36. You are a realist who is not afraid to be romantic, a pragmatist whose unfailing common sense and trust in yourself lend you a truly relaxed, elegant, yet down-to-earth warmth and maturity. You are a joy to be around. So basically, you're not afraid to say I love you to somebody. You know, you're not afraid, to, you're comfortable with doing your own skin. You're not, you're, you're not afraid to be honest with your feelings to yourself and to other people. You know? But you're also you're not telling everyone in the world you love them. You know? You're not making you know you're just being honest with them. Okay, any questions? If you have if you don't have any if you have a question, put your hand down. Oh, everyone's got questions? I gotta try something else. Okay, if you have a question, look at me. It's kind of getting dark here, and I don't want to keep you. It's been a long day. Tomorrow, the first lecture in the morning is going to be on uh, the medical and scientific improve, uh, benefits of exercise, and it's going to go into that the topic of women's ordination. And it's basically talk. It's going to be a guys-only type of uh, thing in here. It's just men. We're going to talk about issues that men face and struggle with in the church. Okay? Um, but. I usually do this talk in two separate sections, and I don't want to overload you guys. So the first half deals with emotional intelligence and setting goals, and the last half deals with study skills and improved test taking skills. I'm going to stick that at the end of the lecture on exercise tomorrow, because my exercise talk's only like 45 minutes. Okay, I just want to, you guys just, you've got, you've got a long day, I want you guys to go relax until the sun sets and all that stuff. So what I want you to do, what we're going to do next, is just going to give you, um, just give you a little bit more information on the emotional intelligence, and then I'm going to uh, actually, if I can get a couple of volunteers, passing passing these out here, and then let me pass this out here, and then I'm going to have, would you mind passing this out? Thank you very much. Okay, so don't write anything on it yet.
kind of a funny, there's a, there's a statement that um, John F. Kennedy made that, you guys heard of Thomas Jefferson? Yeah. He was the third American president, very prolific writer, one of the, uh, was, uh, I think he penned the uh, Declaration of Independence. Uh, he was single in the White House, his wife had died, and there was a story about how John Kennedy had brought over many of the uh, top scholars and some of the local lawyers, like MIT, Massachusetts Institute for Technology, MIT, and these very high IQ people, and he, there's like, 10 of them or so were sitting around the table in the White House, and J JFK was actually one of the, John F. Kennedy was one of the very intelligent presidents, and he said, never has this room has, you know, never has this room had such brain power than when Thomas Jefferson sat by himself to eat dinner. He was, he was known as being probably the most amazing, most brilliant president the U.S. has ever had. Very, very smart person. Okay, so we went over the different, different components of emotional intelligence, and that's what we tested. EQ helps people to think clearly. Communicate more effectively, foster unity in group settings. It reduces polarizing statements. You know, when someone says, "You never do this," like let's say, "You never," like if your teacher, let's say, you have a teacher that has poor, poor EQ, she says, "You never do your homework." Really? Let's take a look at my grade book. Oh, it looks like I turn in seventy-five percent of my homework. I'm only missing twenty-five percent. But she says, you know when people say, you never do this, or you never do that, or you always, you always come to class late. Oh, really? It looks like my, I'm here on time about 50% of the time. It's a lot, I'm missing a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm late a lot, but it's percent-wise, that's a, that's a, is that a correct or incorrect statement by the teacher? Incorrect. It's incorrect, right? When, they, when you use the word always, it means there's no other instance where it's the opposite. When you use the word never, that means it's never a time, right? So it's, it's learning to speak truthfully, not to exaggerate. Now if someone says, like, I caught a fish and it was, it was this big, but really, the, I saw the picture, it's actually just this big, you know? So learning to speak the truth, okay? The influence of VQ or genetic makeup, our childhood experiences, current emotional support, and our physical conditions. Okay, the major influence on EQ. Our emotions are largely controlled by our beliefs. Okay? Our evaluation of events, the way we think about problems, and our silent self-talk. You know how when you talk to yourself? You guys talk to yourself, I think we all do. When you're walking and you're by yourself and you start, you just, you're thinking, you're talking, what are you saying to yourself? Are you saying things that are encouraging? Are you thinking of things that are positive towards your self-development? Are you, are you thinking negatively? Major influences. Sleep is important. They actually did a study on uh, some uh, GIs in the Army. They had them write down what their values were, and then they had them uh, stay awake for two days. Because some of these military people have to be awake for a long time because of military situation. And they, they did a study on these guys, and they noticed that that when people are are well, when they have enough rest, they tend to stick to their values. They tend to, we tend to compromise the more tired we get, and that has a lot to do with emotional intelligence. Your emotional intelligence actually increases. And sleep is very important. Feelings and the function of our thoughts. Feelings result from messages you give yourself. So sometimes you know, sometimes you tend to eat because I feel hungry. You know, or I tend to, you said to do things like, I broke up with my girlfriend because I felt like I didn't like her, you know. It's like all these emotions that I think. Um, your thoughts have much more to do with how you feel than what is actually happening in your life. So basically, there's a story with the military's Paul and Silence. They had just gotten beaten with whips, right? Cat of nine tails, so they had this whip with, it, with uh, like some shards of glass.
example, if it's based upon, they, with all intents and purposes, they should have felt bad. They should have felt pain, sorry for themselves. Why am I in this position? What are they doing? They're singing hymns to God. And they're singing so loud that angels come. Right? And people don't understand what's going on. We can choose our feelings. If we change our thoughts, feelings follow. Feelings follow thoughts. But the same thing is our feelings also influence our thoughts. But we need to know what's, which is superior. Christ on the cross, if he allowed what he felt to change his thinking, he probably would have said, Father, send lightning from heaven to destroy these people. But his thoughts influenced his feelings so that he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. That's being emotionally intelligent. We choose our feelings. Our feelings do not choose us. Okay? I think, therefore, I am. People with low EQ believe that their negative feelings are strictly due to others. I feel horrible because of what Bobby said about me behind my back. Who cares what Bobby thinks about you? It should have nothing to do with who you are. Don't let other people influence who you are. You are who you are. If people are talking bad about you behind your back, let them do it. It's okay. You are who you are. You know what God thinks about you. Okay? All of us, we have close friends and family that know that we're sane people, that are, we're not crazy. Okay? And we can't influence other people's thoughts. If you are not smart enough, successful enough, attractive enough, or talented enough to feel happy and fulfilled. Unfulfilled. All these thoughts have the tendency to make us victims because we think the causes result from something beyond our control. In contrast, you can change the way you think about things, and you can also change your basic values and beliefs. And when you do, you will often experience lasting joy and changes in fulfillment. When people are converted and they change the way they think, usually it's not, they don't get guilty and sad. There's conviction that hits the heart, and now they accept it and change. They usually feel better. They become new creatures. So, if you want attractive lips, Speak words of kindness. If you don't like your eyes, you want lovely eyes, look for the good in others. If you want a slim figure, you're matabat. Share your food with the hungry. <laughs> for boys, walk with the knowledge that you're never alone. Okay? So this is the way to be truly beautiful. Okay, priorities. You guys got a piece of paper there that says priorities at the top. I want you to write your name. One through ten. The priorities of Eden. The priorities of Nephilim. The priorities of John. You know, write your name down. First and last name. And I want you to write down the things that are most important in your life in order of priority. Take, you guys should know, I'm going to give you one minute to do this. Because you should know these things.
Okay, so you can keep that if you haven't finished all out. You can finish that on your own time. But what I want you to do now is I want you to take the piece of paper that looks like a schedule. Okay? See this piece of paper that looks like a schedule? I want you to give me an account of every hour of the day. So take this will probably take about five minutes, just, just broad strokes, okay? It's so like for instance, uh, I shaded in areas that's, you know, most people are sleeping there, that's not, you may not be sleeping, so just change it according to what you're needing to do. So like, when you, and it's an average, so it's not like, I mean, it's like you, know, you usually eat breakfast at 7, and you eat lunch at 12, and, you know, write down, I'm in class from, you know, 8 to 9, I'm in work from that, and just kind of write down the major things you do in your life, okay, just write that down. You know, when you have your devotions, you know. When do you read the Bible? When do you uh, go to church? You know, when are you what part? When are you just what are you doing? I want you to write down an account of every hour of the week. A typical week, not when you're on vacation, you know, a typical you know work week. If I wasn't writing for Christians here, I just would playing all the time.
where you're constantly looking at it. Don't just write it out and then stick it under something and don't never look at it again. Put it somewhere in your house. Put it somewhere where you actually see it all the time. So you're constantly looking at it. Secondly, and then you have a bit, you have a bit medium goal. So maybe a medium goal for a spiritual goal would be like, in one year I'd like to memorize the book of John. That's my my goal for this year as far as a medium goal. And then you have a five-year goal. Maybe my five-year goal is I'd like to memorize the New Testament. I don't know. I mean, you come up with your goal. Something like that. You know, for academic goals, you know, my goal daily is to read the section every day or do my homework every day on time. You know? And then my academic goal for one year is to, I have a B currently in mathematics. I want to bring it up to an A. You know, and so... So you see how your short-term goal makes your mid-term goal better. You know, your short-term goal should help you to achieve your mid-term goals. And then your long-term goal is, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a nutritionist. I want to whatever. You know, what are your what is your ultimate goal in five years? You know, physical goals. You know, hey, I'll tell you my physical goals just to kind of let you know. My short-term goals was to do 100 push-ups every day. Okay. And then medium term goal was to be able to, um, at one point, was to uh, bench press 300 pounds. Okay, that's what is that? Uh, I have a hard time. Like 140 kilos. Okay, and I, I did that already. And then long term goal is to be able to do the bench press uh, 20 times instead of just once. Then I also have for physical goals, I had. Um, Daily to go jogging every day. Midterm goal in a year was to be able to run a marathon, which I did. And then now my long-term five-year goal is I want to do an Ironman. You guys know what that is? An Ironman is a, it's a triathlon where you start off with a swim and you swim 2.4 miles. And that's, what is that? That's probably like four and a half kilometers. Um, and then you follow by a bike ride. It's 100 and 118 mile bike, 100, 112 mile bike ride, and that's followed by a 26.2 mile run, all all the same time. So I just, I want to do it before I get too old, you know. So, and so those are my goals, you know, to be able to do something like that. And I think if we're living the health message, you know, I think we should be able to do this stuff, you know. I just think it's a good example, you know. Oh man, these guys are so healthy; they can do what, you know. So. And then, and then other goals. So the other goals, you may have other goals that don't fit there. Write your goals down. Okay? And your goals should fit your value systems. Okay? Make sure they're uh, congruent with each other. All right. So you have some homework. This is really school. Finish your schedule. Finish your priorities. Finish your goals. Secondly, find someone that knows your, find a friend of yours that you know is emotionally intelligent. Somebody that you know will keep you accountable and I want you to tell them your goals. Make a photocopy of your goals and give it to them. And then, if you don't, if you don't, once a week, you can set some time and say, how are you doing with your goals? Or once a month? You know, they call, they do this now. They, they call them life coaches. You know how if you have a coach when you're playing soccer or you're playing football, they teach, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta use your left foot or your right foot. What's becoming very popular nowadays, or like when you're working out in the gym, they have these personal trainers or they have people that are encouraging you. Like when you're baptized into a church, you have um, somebody that helps you to, you know, Paul and Silas, you know, type of person, Silas Barnabas helps Paul along. Uh, I think in the Philippines, you guys have sponsors, like when you're getting married and things like that. You have mentors. When it comes to goals, find a partner that, can, that, that way you can keep accountable. And if you're married or if you're in a relationship, it's not a good idea to have it be your spouse or your significant other. Because you're around them all the time and they tend to forget these types of things. So have somebody that you know will keep you accountable. Okay? Because it's always not a good like I, I know my wife, I'm always like, did you do that? Why are you always getting hard to hold? So, I mean, find somebody that, that you, know, you know, they won't think you're nagging at them, okay? Okay, any questions? Did that make sense? Did you guys see that? Okay. All right, so plan 
great things for God and expect great things from God. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, let me have a word of prayer with you, and we'll go ahead and uh, let you out here early. You're free to do whatever you want, but make sure it's one of your priorities. Amen. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Why don't we stand? And maybe we're going to sing a song. Do you guys know He Leadeth Me? What's the first verse? He leadeth me no blessed thought.